Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite jigs on the market right now, why it's such an amazing jig, how it will help you catch more fish. This is probably one of the most versatile jigs on the market. So we're going to cover all that in today's video, rod reel line setup, color selection, everything you need to know about this jig. So stay tuned. Let's get right into it. So I've been fishing a jig for years up here in Pennsylvania. It's one of the most effective baits pretty much year round. As with a lot of the states in the United States, it just works excellent for bass always can get bit flipping wood with a jig um, swim jigs work excellent you can flip grass with them you can skip docks with them you can pretty much do anything you need with a jig so we're going to talk about why this one impresses me over some of the other jigs that are on the market considering i've fished pretty much every make and model that's out there i've even made my own in the past i've done everything you can possibly think of when it comes to fishing a jig just because it works so many days out of the year i know some people absolutely love fishing a jig i'm one of them i will always have a jig tied on no matter where i go it works pretty much 365 days out of the year there are other people that struggle with fishing a jig and one of the things that i learned when i started fishing a jig is just to keep it simple so for starters my rod and reel combo i keep it really simple um this is a seven foot three heavy action rod that's pretty much all i ever use for a jig um i've anything in that seven foot to seven four range heavy action is what you're looking for you need a lot of backbone to get that hook through this weed guard and into a fish's mouth but you also need a good tip on your rod to be able to feel bites make accurate casts especially if you're skipping docks with this you want a rod with a really soft tip but a stiff backbone you want it to shut off fast at the tip there um, that's the most important part of your jig rod other than that, the more important part to me is actually my reel and my line. For a reel, you always want a 7 1 to 1 gear ratio reel or something in the 7s. That faster gear ratio, oftentimes these fish are going to eat that jig. They're going to swim right at you with it out of the cover. You're going to have to pick up a bunch of line really fast, get a good hook set on these fish, get them coming to you out of the cover, especially if you're fishing some heavier cover with it. That faster gear ratio allows me to do all that and allows me to pick up my slack quickly so that I can get a good hook set on fish as well. So that's the number one thing when it comes to a reel. And then for line, depends on what type of jig you're fishing. This one right here, I'm gonna fish between 17 and 20 pound test straight fluorocarbon. I like fluorocarbon over monofilament because it gives you more sensitivity. It has less stretch uh, and you'll notice bites better. Fluorocarbon is also a little bit more abrasion resistant, so you'll be able to get those fish out of heavier cover. The reason I don't like braid very much, I feel like if you're fishing around wood and stuff like that, that's where I'm usually fishing a jig most of the time. When you're pulling that jig over a log with braid, it will kind of saw into the wood a little bit and then you'll actually get snagged more when using braid on a jig. You could do braid to fluorocarbon leader, but the other thing that braid does is float. So when you're fishing a bottom bouncing bait, if you're using braid, you flip your jig out there, you're gonna get an arc in your line that goes down to the bait. Rather than fluorocarbon that sinks, you're gonna get a direct connection to that bait and it'll actually drag through the water more naturally, especially if you're fishing a little bit deeper. So I always go straight fluorocarbon that's the number one way to go there. 7-3 heavy rod, 7-1-to-1 one gear ratio. You will be set with a jig combo right there. That is the ultimate jig fishing setup. So what is this jig that you need to try if you're just getting into jig fishing or if you've been doing it for years? That's gonna be the Sixth Sense Hybrid Jig. This jig is excellent at fishing all types of cover, comes in a wide variety of colors and sizes, so it allows you to pretty much do anything you could need to do when it comes to jig fishing. So first thing we're gonna notice with this jig, one thing that I really like with my baits is an inline line tie, and it like I like it to have like an arc down to the hook. So that arc right there, when you're pulling it over wood, instead of it wedging in a piece of wood, if you have like a gap in your hook eye, you're gonna go over the piece of wood and come back through it and it's gonna fish much more effectively if you have that rounded belly. The other thing this has is a triangular head. The triangular head with the vertical line tie will allow it to come through grass really well. When that comes through, it'll push the grass apart and come through the grass much better than if you had a flat line tie or if you had a bulbous head on the end, it wouldn't come through grass as well. So this actually comes through grass really well as well. And with that flat head in combination with the triangular head, it'll skip really, really well as well. So if you're fishing docks, we do it a ton here in the Northeast. 
you get a lot of grass around the docks. You can skip this under the dock really well, and then it'll come through any of the grass that's around the dock because of the triangular head. So it's a double win right there. The other thing you can do with this is actually swim this jig because of the triangular head. It'll come through the grass as well. So that triangular head design is a really neat design that allows it to do many things. The other thing that it allows it to do because the triangular shape is very fat at the end, you can actually even fish this as a football jig or dragging a jig offshore, and we'll talk about that in some sizes later And this bait comes in. Uh, but it basically allows you to fish this anywhere you could potentially ever fish a jig, and you might only need one jig tied on your rod or in your tackle box at all. So that's one of the reasons why I love this jig so much. It comes in a 3 eighths, a half ounce, and a 3 quarter ounce size. The 3 quarter is really effective for flipping deeper weed lines with that heavier uh, head, but it's also that very good football jig replacement. Uh, my favorite size, if I were to get just one, would be the half ounce size. You can pretty much do anything with it. You can skip docks, you can swim it a little bit deeper, you can drag it, you can do everything with the half ounce size. And then if you fish a lot of shallower water, the 3 8 size would be good for that as well. It comes in a variety of colors. So like this one right here is perfect for dirty water. It's actually black and blue with chartreuse and orange on the belly. If you fish very, very dirty water, this color is awesome. But in general, again, if you're keeping it simple, a green pumpkin based color, it doesn't matter what else is in the skirt, if it's green pumpkin orange, green pumpkin blue, green pumpkin purple, does not matter. Pick one that's green pumpkin looking and then pick one that has a black or black and blue base. My favorite one from Sixth Sense is actually black light, which is black and purple. Uh, but you can pretty much pick whichever one you want as long as you have something that's a black or black and blue and then a green pumpkin of some variety that will cover all your bases when it comes to color. So if you're just getting into jig fishing, grab a green pumpkin and a black and blue in a half ounce. Those two jigs alone will have you covered for 95% of your jig fishing with this design right here. Now, when it comes to trailer selection, this is where I'll play around a little bit more. As I was talking about with skipping those docks, this trailer right here, this is a 3.3 stroker craw from Sixth Sense. Um, they are meant paired up perfectly together. So you can see this skirt actually doesn't hang down to the appendages. It hangs the perfect length. The bulk is up here in the jig, but your appendages are free flowing down behind the skirt. If your skirt on a jig is too long, it'll impede the action on the appendages. That does not happen on this bait because it's cut perfectly and they're made to go together. But the stroker craw has a flat belly as well. So you have a flat head, flat belly, and not a lot in the appendages here. It makes it excellent for skipping. It's like skipping the flattest rock you could ever find when you're out there on the water. Um, so that is the key to this setup here. The other a benefit of using the stroker craw, if you're dragging it offshore, it has that twin tail action uh, to give it a little bit of action while you're dragging it real slow out there. And then you can also swim it. The reason I like the stroker craw the best as a trailer, I can swim it down the bank. The action in the trailer will cause it to swim while you're going through the water draw those fish in, get you those bites. It's not like a, a bland appearance there. Then if you come up to something you wanna flip, you can just flip your bait in there. The trailer still works, it still falls and has the action while it's falling down in the water. The other trailer that I really like on this jig is going to be a six Sense Prawn. That Prawn is gonna be for more colder water environments. You can use it as a dragging jig, but it's not gonna have any action. It's just gonna drag flat the claws just kind of hang there but if you have colder water that's an excellent time to use that more when i'm going to be using that prawn is going to be when i'm flipping uh wood in colder water up here so early spring late fall when that water temp is like 50 ish degrees low 40s even that is when I'm going to use that prawn trailer. I want no action in my jig. I want it dragging so slowly without any movement. That's what all the food is looking like at that time of year. So that's when I'm gonna to go to that trailer. But again, if you're just getting into jig fishing, get this 3.3 stroker craw in a green pumpkin or a black and blue, and you'll do just fine with that. Another thing I really like to do with my jigs, I mismatch my trailer sometimes. So this is black and orange and chartreuse. 
and I have like a purple trailer on here. You don't have to get that advanced with a bunch of different colors like that, but what I mean by that is if you're getting a black and blue and a green pumpkin, one of these jigs, you can pick black and blue or a green pumpkin stroker craw and only get one pack and it will go on either jig. Nothing in nature is fully solid one color. So even if you're mimicking bluegills, bluegills will have blue, they'll have green, they'll have different tones to them. So if you get a green pumpkin purple jig and put a black and blue trailer on it, it seems weird, but it actually looks more natural and like a bluegill than if you took a plain green pumpkin jig and just put a green pumpkin trailer on it. Both will still work, but sometimes when everyone's matching their trailers to their jig, if you throw something just a little bit different in color, it'll get you some more bites. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video talking about this awesome jig. If you'd like to get your hands on some, you can use my code Quince on the Sixth Sense website. You'll save 10% on your whole order and you'll be helping out the channel a ton. And if you wanna check this video out right here, I did another video talking about some other jig fishing tips to help you catch more fish in colder water. So that time of the year is coming up soon. Make sure you check that video out before it gets here so you'll be ready to catch some fish.